Okay, here we go. Uh, I read about the drag show in Pasco, and I heard about how they had kids in cages. I didn't know this was happening until the next day. I'm sh not sure why I'm sending this. Other than just grasping at straws on what we should do as a church and community, maybe we could have a mass text and they come up with these ideas, Washington State child abuse hotline, all this stuff. But this is the question. And if you don't know, we had uh, we live in the Tri Cities, so it's a fairly conservative community. You know, Seattle's on the west side, Portland's to our south. We are not that, and so they had this event where they at the I guess I'll call it a gay bar in Pasco mm -hmm. had an event where they had a drag show where men were dressed as drag queens. The problem was they were advertising it as basically a Disney kids' night with bright colors and those types of things. And so I saw the videos, and you had parents bringing their nine, ten-year-old little girls dressed as princesses, handing out one-dollar bills to males dressed as women, dancing around and doing various, like almost strip teases, as they're giving them one-dollar bills in a strip club format. So that's the situation. I'm going to throw one more in there that just happened, and I don't know if you knew this, but this just made Glenn Beck and louder with Crowder and all that. But Desert Hills Middle School which is a middle school right down the road from us, decided it was a good idea during their assembly to have um, a plexiglass barrier with marshmallow cream on each side and this contest where the students were racing the staff licking marshmallow cream on a plexiglass this thin. And so it went viral. It's it's viral on social media and Twitter and everything. Well, a, an adult on one side and a kid on the other side? The staff, the teachers. So you had, the, and the kids are filming this, and it looks, you know, it's like you're watching the teachers making out with the kids with a plexiglass in between. And so no adult thought that this was a bad idea. You have the principal and the vice principal and, you know, all, all these various resources. So it went viral. Uh, uh, it was on blaze.com, which is Beck's website. And so... I threw that in there because we have this rise in the times we're living in where these events are happening in our community and people are coming saying, what do we do as, as a church and as Christians in our community about those things? Well, I think we need to have a fit in the first place. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's number one. And so what's happening with that? I, I heard about that, but it was with, I didn't hear about the adults. Yeah, I mean, it on was it was the. Are you sure, there were, there were adults. Absolutely, on one side? absolutely. That's why it went viral. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and none of the you know no no adult that their their comment one of the comments I read was well it was the students' idea, and it's like yeah, but none of the staff, teachers, principal thought that that was maybe not a good idea. <laughs> what a bunch of morons. Yeah, and you have the situation on video yeah. where it looks like groom. You know, people are like, look at their they're grooming the kids, and you know. Yeah, it goes on. Yeah, it's completely inappropriate. Exactly. You know, it's like that's a that's a problem with the world that we live in. Um, hopefully, is superintendent of schools doing anything about this? Yeah, they wrote a letter saying it's unacceptable. We don't promote this policy. It will never happen again. Uh, so you know, I mean, they're not saying it was fine. I okay. Mean, well, that's that's a good thing. You yeah. know, uh, the. You know, any any time that you're dealing with the world, uh, it's it, it's one of the it's one of these things where, on the one hand, you don't want to sit back and and not do anything, and on the other hand, you don't want to be known for what you're against. And so, we wouldn't have this situation going on in our culture if the church was doing its job. And and so, that that's the first thing I I, I want to state about the, these kinds of things. The culture is going down the tubes because the church has not been doing its job. And what we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be about Jesus. We're supposed to be about um, uh, leading people to Christ. And um, when we're not about that, then what ends up happening is Satan comes in like a flood. And he starts turning the culture the way that he wants it to go. And so way too many Christians are, are pew warmers. Um, way, way too many believers just are not engaged with the, with the people around them. And so, um, again, the reason I'm saying this is not to just pick on, on church people, but it's because uh, when judgment's coming on a culture or a nation or the world, God always starts with the church. So judgment begins at the house of God. And so that's a that's the first thing that, that we need to be looking at. And having said that, I you know I'm not opposed to 
uh, legal uh, situations um, with these kinds of things. You know, uh, getting a lawyer and suing people for putting kids in cages. Uh, you know, uh, representing them as being sex objects and and that kind of stuff. And and so those uh, um, and shaming people. Shaming is good. You know, somebody. I don't know. Any any time that that you're dealing with the internet, you're gonna you're gonna have people who just flame you and uh, scream and yell and that kind of stuff. Uh, and you need to expect those kind those kinds of things. But um, having conversations with people where you where you go, what in the world is wrong with you? You you know, and calling somebody a freak is valid. You know, calling somebody a, a pervert is valid in situations like those. And letting people know that they, you know, that they're far away from God and, and that they need Jesus goes along with those things. You know, again, the a lot of the people that I dealt with when when I was in the workplace were construction guys, and if a construction guy was acting like a freak, I'd tell him it. I'd, I'd say that that is twisted and messed up. You are one freakish unit. And you need Jesus, dude. You know, and, and I, I don't have a problem with saying stuff like that. And uh, I, I think that, that Christians need to be um, more um, bold in, in certain situations. And so we, you know, we had actually had some people from our fellowship that were down there and, uh, and protesting and that kind of thing. I think that that's totally appropriate. And there may be more things that are appropriate in those situations. Uh, Obviously, um, there there were a couple of places in our town that did this. One of them did it on Easter Sunday. Uh, did a a, hmm. a whole transgender thing on Easter Sunday. And that's obviously um, it was obviously done to get a rise out of Christians and uh, as a slam on on Jesus and the church and. That kind of stuff. Usually, these people think that they're slamming the Catholic Church. They're what they're doing is slamming Jesus, is what they're doing. And so, um, you know, uh, this is one of the places that we live, and the reason that we're here is because um, uh, people in church compromise. So, need to stop compromising. Main focus needs to be uh, telling people about Christ giving them the gospel. People who are caught up in this lifestyle are miserable units. They are miserable people. And they have awful lives. And everything is twisted and a drama uh, in, in their lives. And um, many of them sooner or later want something better than what they've got. And, and so you don't just write them off, um, uh, but you need to be real with them and, and uh, give them Jesus. So. So we have uh, a couple bills that are uh, cleared the House. One of them has cleared the House, cleared the Senate, went back to the House because of an amendment. That's a 2A bill, 1240. We have another one. I don't know if you heard about this one, 5599 mm -hmm. that just passed, which uh, apparently there's a version of this in California. I was talking to Tracy. Did it, did it pass the Senate? No. It's, uh, okay. it's out of the House, but the, yeah. it's, the chances of it not passing the Senate are slim. Yeah. And basically it allows, and California has a version of this already, it allows for the state, a counselor, school counselor, whatever, to take away parental rights. Um, and if your kid wants to transition, um, basically the state the, can get involved in that process without parental consent. Yeah, the, uh, when I read about it, it was about kids who ran away from home. Okay. And so if they if they ran a, uh, away from home and they were in a uh, uh, youth center, you know the uh, a, a youth shelter, mm -hmm. that the uh, uh, people who ran the shelter were not obligated to tell the parents that the kids were there if the kid was trying to transition. And so that's that's what I read about the bill. Okay. And so obviously that's still messed up and dangerous. Right. You know that. You know, um, and again, you got governmental authorities who are trying to take away parental rights, and this is not going to end well. Yeah. You know, there, there, are, uh, again, there, there are things that that you do that are going to get very, very bad responses uh, from people, and you know, frankly, I, I don't understand why there hasn't been more violence 
That's what I don't understand is, um, uh, I, I know California, you know, maybe isn't a good example, but what do they expect me to do as a Christian man who loves my kids if they run away mm-hmm. and say stupid stuff and then CPS knocks on my door or whatever and says, I'm sorry, we got to take your kids there uh, for gender. Well, again, that's not what this bill is saying. Well, it's they're, that they don't have they, to tell your kids. No, they don't have to tell you that they yeah. have their kids. Right. And then they, they, they affirm the yeah. gender right. stuff. And it's like, what, you know, and, and then that goes a certain way. Yeah. And then what do they expect the dad, me, to mm-hmm. do about that? Right. Just go, oh, well. Yeah. Moving on. I mean, that's, yeah, I that's wish, a bummer. Yeah. I wish society was different. You know, and that's, that's not going to go that way. Right. And so, you know. People it's, are nuts. Yeah, they're nuts. They're starting it. You know, this is one of the things that I've, I've noticed about, not noticed, but I, I've known this about the left. It's been like this since the 80s, you guys. These people start it. They, they, they coarsen the culture. They coarsen politics. And then they have a fit when uh, the other party comes back and does some of the same things to them. And it's just ridiculous. These people start it, and then when there is a reaction, uh, they have a hissy fit about how everybody's, uh, you know, anti-patriotic and and all this kind of nonsense, you know. And so we need to be praying for our government officials, obviously, uh, because we've got some of the worst people in government that you could have there. Anybody who who would put together a bill like this is one messed up unit. 